dear delegates of the 2014 Australia-China Youth Dialogue, it's my pleasure and privilege to speak to you and contribute to the dialogue. On behalf of the Australia-China Council, which I chair, first I would like to congratulate you on being selected to represent the new generations of Australia and Chinese at this important event. In the short period of five years, the Australia-China Youth Dialogue has emerged from a small, informal group of students to be the leading platform for exchanges between the future leaders of Australia-China relations. This evolution is spectacular and is a testament to the ambition of the organisers and delegates and the strength, diversity and dynamism of the bilateral relationship. I'd like to talk to you today about the power of perceptions and the opportunities for you to change and shape them. As future leaders of Australia-China engagement, you, through your careers, involvement in the events such as this one, and participation in the general public discourse about Australia and China, are helping to shape one of Australia's most important bilateral relationships. Australian perceptions of China have come a long way in the last 40 years, from images of underdevelopment and fragility of the 1970s to the fascination with the accomplishments of China today, a new centre of economic gravity, dynamic and a fast-paced social change. The same can be said to the understanding of Australian and Chinese imagination, from the exotic faraway place with little relevance to China to one of the most popular overseas studies destination for Chinese students and China's major economic science, tourism and cultural partner. Your generation is equipped with the best set of tools to understand, interpret and shape the views about our countries and developing new narratives of how our two countries relate to each other. It will be no easy task. We are in what some describe as a new era of global instability. Asia Pacific Indian Ocean region is fast becoming a centre of global economic and strategic influence, while the Middle East and Europe experience turmoil that may disrupt the global strategic, political and economic balance. The revival of our region is not only about unparalleled economic growth, it is also about distinctive strategic, historic, ethnic, demographic and social settings that are unique to this region and are both its strength and its weaknesses. It is about strategic and economic interdependence, cooperation and competition among regional powers such as India, China, US, Japan and Indonesia and the Republic of Korea. How these countries and other regional players such as Australia manage their interests, opportunities, grievances, their collective past and demands of the interconnected present and future will ultimately determine if the 21st century will be largely peaceful or marred by conflict and rivalry, the type of which we all thought belonged to the 20th century. Clearly Australia is no longer far away from the centre of this economic and strategic gravity. We are in the middle of it. My view is that we will fare best in this uncertainty if we have the best set of diplomatic, economic, technological and cultural tools which help us to build and expand deep links with our region and develop a nuanced and sophisticated understanding of our neighbours, especially China. China and Australia have made a remarkable progress in developing closer economic, political, education and cultural ties. I am sure all of you by now know an impressive set of statistics of our bilateral relationship, size of our trade, student and tourist cohorts, intensity of our scientific, cultural and community exchanges. But we still have a lot of gaps to fill. Political, social, economic and historical forces that shape its present and future are still limited. Only 3% of Year 12 students in Australia study Chinese and 94% of these are native or near native speaking Chinese Australians. And we need our government, business, community institutions and experts to have an increasingly sophisticated view of China. The government's new Colombo plan is an important and effective policy to address this gap by enabling our students to immerse in the region early in their academic and professional life. Our trade relationship is a major connecting thread between our two countries, but we have to continuously look for new frontiers of economic engagement in food security, professional services and creative industries where Australia's advantage, so obvious in our resources trade in relation to Chinese markets, is far from being insured. 
Our economic connectivity will not automatically change our perceptions of each other and dimin diminish invisible barriers of misunderstanding. We need to work through our education systems, community networks and global forums. But most importantly, we ought to build new and strengthen existing, what I call the institution of dialogue and influence, such as the Australia-China Council, Asia Society and your dialogue. These are the platforms for regular and open dialogue on our mutual interests, opportunities, challenges and risks. But most importantly, delegates, these platforms influence our perceptions of each other and form the intellectual background for our exchanges. That is why the Australia-China Council, 40 years in existence and a lot of our leading firms, universities and non-profits have got behind the Australia-China Youth Dialogue as one of these institutions of influence and dialogue that give a voice to the new generations of Australians and Chinese in whose hands the leadership of the bilateral relationship will lie. Australia-China Council, we are proud to be founding partner of your group. I am confident you will find the dialogue stimulating, engaging and thought-provoking. I also hope that you will leave this year's dialogue with a sense of responsibility for shaping the future of the Australia-China relationship and passion to make your mark on it. All the very best in your discussions.